Right, congrats. You are here. Welcome to part three, all about reducing your belly fat. And let's just say this is the final episode. So hopefully you're up to date and you've watched all three episodes and you know what's going on. So let me have a, a quick recap for you, if you like. So over the last couple of days, we've been talking about why women struggle to lose belly fat, especially women over 40. Lots going on. OK, hormonal changes, all sorts of things going on. But Part one, we talked about visceral fat, that uh, a different type of fat that women and, and men to, to well, men to more so, but uh, in particular women over 40 starts to accumulate. So what's going on there? Why are we getting more visceral fat? And it's that visceral fat is, is different to subcutaneous fat, the fat that's underneath your skin. That visceral fat gets right around the belly and kind of strangles your organs a little bit, which is obviously dangerous and pushes your belly out so that's not good right we don't want that so lots of um lots of women over 40 start to struggle there. it starts to accumulate and we've been talking about why it's important that you understand what's going on and what you can do about it so as a visceral fat is a little bit dangerous we want to make sure that we keep in check so phases in hey you cheeky monkey good to see you phaser great to see you in here i'm a little bit late today so i apologize i was trying to sort things out and it's like ah running out of time so i am on here but better late than never, right? So yesterday's video, we spoke about the hidden reasons, some of the hidden reasons why so many people or so many women struggle and some of the misconceptions that uh, that some women fall foul of. They fall into those traps or some of those myths. So look at this. Everyone's jumping in. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. So morning, Leah. Morning, Dawn. Great to see you. And great to have you in with me for part three. Super excited to be here. So and actually, speaking about these different parts, if you've not watched part two, well, part one or two, go back because I guarantee you'll learn something and it might connect the dots for you, especially if you're just watching this video. I'm like, OK, what? why is Gavin talking about this? So go back and watch part one and two. And if you're watching live, obviously, like you ladies have done here, say hello. Let me know what's going on. How's your start to the day? OK, how's it going? Good so morning, morning. Good to see you, ladies. Great to see you on here. So. Yes. Oh, and before I forget, if you're watching the replay, make sure you stick a hashtag replay in the comments so that, that I know you've seen this video and we can continue the conversation in the comments later on as well. So don't be don't be frightened to comment, even though I'm not live. You can still talk to me. And same for you, ladies in there. If you have any questions at all, do let me know. And, we'll, and I'll try and go over them in this live. Otherwise, I'll pop back on here later on. OK, so that's all out of the way. Now, if you're here, obviously answer your questions. And I want to make sure that you do go away with clarity, you knowing what you're doing. So good morning. Live for, <laughs> for once. Good. Great to see you in here. So if you've uh, hopefully you've seen parts one and two and you're up to date, if you haven't, let me know in the comments which video you haven't seen. So we're on part three right now. So hopefully you've seen parts one and two. If you haven't, Stick a comment down there now, put part one, part two, and I'll hop on here and, and give you the links that you need to go back and watch them. So I'm excited today because today's topic, we're going to delve into the conclusion. So the three keys I mentioned yesterday, we have, have a solution. It's three rolled into one. So it's three keys to remove belly fat and in, in particular for, for women over 40. And and that's going to stop that visceral fat taking hold in your belly and accumulating. We spoke about the snowball effect on Monday, and we want to stop that snowball effect and rewind it. Okay, so we're going to talk about that today. So I want to make sure that you do take take action on this, and and we do get to get rid of that belly fat. So I'll explain exactly what we're looking into here now. So key number one, and to to emphasize this story, I want to tell you a quick story about an, an old client of mine, Kathy. She, Kathy, um, it's a few years ago now, but uh, you know she's married, kids mid mid 40s um at the time and when she came to me she'd been struggling with belly fat as as many of, of you have and tried all different things you know dieting clean eating um exercise cardio hit workouts all sorts of different things and and when i delved into what was going on we you know, had a chat and this is all i always do we have a chat before really jumping in I thought, okay it's pretty obvious that you've got a cortisol issue so a bit of a problem there and we touched on this the other day and it's stopping Kathy and maybe you from, from losing belly fat. So even, even with healthy eating, even with uh, exercise, you're still struggling. And let me know. Let me know. Have you heard of cortisol before? If you've 
if you've been following me for a while, you probably have. But if you haven't, it's not a problem. So do let me know in the comments. So type cortisol for me. And then if you haven't, it's not a problem because we're going to delve into this right now. So cortisol is often known as your stress hormone. And there's all sorts of different stresses, right? And I can guarantee you've got some form of stress in your life. There's no doubt about it. We all have um, examples of stress. Um, let's think yeah, financial stress, you know, work, Christmas, you know, Christmas is coming up, you know, paying for, <laughs> paying for Christmas. We have um, all the other works, you know, deadline, deadline stresses, things like that. Relationships, um, marriage, all right? I'm pretty sure I stress Mrs. W out many, many times a day. So she's probably got a lot of stress from me and, uh, you know, she causes me a little bit of stress sometimes as well. But to kids, um, I think it was Faisal, you were on here yesterday, weren't you? you know, I, I, haven't, I haven't replied to your comment yet because I've been so, so busy. So I will go back over everyone's comments. But Faisal, you mentioned, I think you're, you've got a teenager at home <laughs> and stressing you out a little bit, right? So all sorts of different stresses that are going on, um, you know, mental, emotional and physical as well. So we touched on this yesterday. So exercise can be a stress. Now, as I mentioned this, if you're already stressed, pouring more stress into the mix is not a good idea, okay? I'm not saying you shouldn't exercise at all, but sometimes you might have to dial it down a little bit. And looking at the, the stress that Kathy had, okay? So she's married, so her husband was often at work in quite a demanding job. So he was out, you know, out early, back late, um, so not really getting involved at, at home so much. And so she's having to look after the kids, do effing at home, cook all the meals, and still wanted to keep herself in shape. So you can imagine a lot of stress on her shoulders right there. And just the thought of going to the gym was, uh, was stressing her out. But she got into, into the habit of like, you know, I have to go to the gym. I have to go and be there for an hour, do, do a workout and all that. And that was just stressing her out, thinking about that. So the cortisol in... Kathy's body was building up, building up, and she got to a point where, so that fight or flight mode. So it's where your where your body then looks for that safety blanket. And can you guess where your body safety blanket is? And when I, when, I, when you're thinking about that, I'm going to look at these comments that are coming in. So yes, nasty cortisol, cortisol. Yeah, dead deadline stress for sure, and co-workers. Some, yeah, definitely co-workers. Right, you sort of poke them in the eye. So you do one. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's good. Some of you are already familiar with, with cortisol and, and how it affects your body and yeah. And guess where it affects your, your body. Guess where? All right. I'm pretty sure you know, right? All right. At the belly, around the belly. Okay. And this extra stress starts to build up cortisol. And I mentioned this the other day, it's, it's like putting a padlock on your belly. Um, the more stress you are, the stronger that padlock is and the harder it is to get rid of belly fat. And it becomes a little bit easier to then store it. So key number one, all right, is to control your cortisol. Okay, control your cortisol. That is going to help you out massively. And while Kathy was working, with me, she managed to lose 14 pounds. And just by controlling her cortisol, you know, looking at the areas in her life, right, what can I do? Okay. And for her as well, it was cutting back on exercise. So rather than going to the gym for an hour, it was shorter workouts, more manageable, some things that she could do at home that, you know, that didn't stress her out, that she's not having to, to drive to the gym and spend extra time there and then coming back and thinking, oh, I've got all this to do at home still. So key number one is control your cortisol. Key number two, let's just jump right in, shall we? Key number two is reducing inflammation. And uh, I touched on this yesterday because we were speaking about Samantha, again, an overall an old client of mine, and we spoke about bread, and how that used to cause her to become bloated is when she first came to me she's got quite skinny arms and legs but her belly it was like you know like a i hate to say but like a pregnant belly you know it wasn't good it was bloated it ballooned out and it was this bread and, and certain other foods that were causing inflammation bread was the key one okay and when you've got inflammation in the gut again it's it's another form of stress and acts like cortisol increases goes up and your body's looking at that safety blanket and of course belly fat that's where it goes so it's another form of stress and we want to avoid those stresses in the body so how do we get rid of inflammation okay so everybody's different everybody's different and there are you know there's some women that say they're eating healthy they've 
they're eating clean and more often than not they've, they've read a blog or a magazine and they're copying things that are in there but some of the foods that are in there might not be suitable for you um so you have to recognize what foods cause inflammation and what's going to help get rid of that inflammation so for instead you know sam's um example it was bread you know some people might be absolutely fine with bread but for sam it definitely wasn't the case and sometimes it's it's healthy foods as well that cause inflammation you know if you here's, here's the thing have you ever noticed um have you ever eaten food that's caused you to bloat or made you feel a certain way afterwards so let me know in the, in the comments what what have we got on there so have you have you ever been out for dinner and you've come back and you're like, oh my God, <laughs> not just because you've eaten too much though, okay? Because it's something that you've eaten is, is caused that inflammation. It's almost, I don't know, gassy. It's, it's just expanded. It's gone, gone like a balloon. So let me know. And Bob, Bob has jumped in as well. Good to see you here, Bob. So con connected family. Yeah, there's, 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 always, there's always family that uh, they do stress you out. So potatoes, that is a, it's a funny one, that one. But yeah, there's all sorts of different foods. Sugar for sure. Sugar is one for me. And I, <laughs> I've known at Christmas time because when I let my my guard down a little bit, there's uh, there's these chocolate Lindor balls, and I love them, but they are definitely not good for for me. That's for sure. So sugar is one for me, and bread, commercial bought bread, terrible for me. I have to, I have to make my own bread or get go to a, a bakery, get the you know the sourdough spelt something like that that is much better but you've got to find out what works for you and sometimes salad you are kidding me Fader. you are definitely kidding me there so broccoli one of the only veg vegetables i like so that's a shame but yeah sometimes we have to find out what works what, what are the foods that causes issues in terms of our digestive system what's going to cause stress further down the line and sometimes the big the big um reactions do us a favor because then we know for certain okay that is definitely a bogey food. I'm gonna to have to avoid that. But sometimes smaller, smaller reactions don't help us out because they can leave us in a, in a chronic state of inflammation. And um, so some people uh, are just living in a constant state of inflammation. Their digestive system is a bit of a mess, but they've just it's the norm now. You know, they're sort of getting on with it. They don't even know anything different. And so sometimes it you know take out some foods, see what helps, and that that can really help reduce that inflammation, reduce that stress, reduce that cortisol, and stop your your belly fat, that visceral fat, snowballing, okay? Yes, the limb balls, yeah. <laughs> they are so addictive, those limb balls. Really, really addictive. So I've, I've told my mother-in-law usually buys me some every Christmas. I said, no, don't don't get me any. I don't want any. So let's, let's, let's do a quick recap here. So we've got control your cortisol and reduce your inflammation. That's the first two keys, the first two solutions. Number three is to balance your hormones. You know hormones play a huge role in 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 your 40s 50s and 60s you know many of the the women that i work with are are in their 40s 50s and their 60s and going through lots of hormonal changes some have already been through them and still struggling to to get rid of that belly fat and you know when they when they've told me about some of the past efforts some of the things that they've tried and solutions that they've borrowed from friends family and it perhaps has worked for a friend or a family member and it's not working for them and part of that is because everybody's different everyone's got different things going on in their life different things that affect their hormones food stress all sorts of different things going on so we're all all very different and let me let me give you another example so years ago i read i ran the reading marathon so it's a city in in the uk called reading and i i've got to got there with my friend and realized and that's uh, I didn't have my running shoes, so I had to wear my sort of crappy, crappy running shoes or gym shoes that were just not for running. And, and there were certainly wrong types of shoes. I, re I ran the marathon anyway, and my feet were in bits, my hips were hurting. And what I'm what I'm saying here, it was the wrong solution on that day. Okay, so sometimes you borrow things from different people in different areas, and it's not going to work. It's going to affect your hormones differently. You have different things going on in your life that are making your perhaps making your hormones go squiffy and lots of you going through menopause premenopause perimenopause and we have to look at areas in our life to to really think okay how can i control this as best i can and certain things will work for for your friends family and not so much for you so you've got to figure out what what works for you there but you certainly got to try and balance those hormones and just looking over over the first two controlling cortisol that's going to help massively reducing inflammation that's going to help okay 
get these balance, these hormones back on track for you. Okay. So figure out what's going on. So again, let's, let's quickly recap. We've got cortisol, control that inflammation. Definitely want to reduce that. Look out for those bogey foods and look at trying to balance those hormones. And as I said, if we can get cortisol sorted, inflammation sorted, that's going to help massively. Okay. So your body's going to start to work much, much better. So everyone's unique and it's not, not, not always a one size fits approach. Everyone's unique. I think we need to celebrate that uniqueness. Okay. So if, uh, if you've tried different things in the past, it's worked for your friends and not necessarily for you. Let's, let's, let's know, let's recognize here. Let's, you are unique. Let's celebrate your uniqueness here. So stick unique in the comments for me. If you if you feel you're unique, let's, let's stick a unique in the comments for me right now. And and, and yeah, and recognize what works for, for one person might not necessarily work for you. Now, some of the things that I do with my clients, some habits that we, we look to approach to try and build on um, a healthy lifestyle and try and try and get these hormones back on track are different across the board. Because everyone's got different things going on in their life. Kids, uh, stresses at work, stresses at home. As I said, you're running around trying to do everything at home. Your husband's not back till late. It can be a nightmare. Okay, so we have to work around these certain things. and, and Eat certain foods and sometimes, more importantly, try and build better habits. Okay. But yeah, definitely want to take the pressure because it's not necessarily something that you're doing wrong. It's just some of the things you've tried in the past aren't for you. Okay. So I definitely want to take the pressure off you there. So the three keys we've got control that cortisol. Okay. Reduce your inflammation and sort out your hormones. Okay. Let's try and balance those hormones. But remember that. You're unique and you're different to everyone else. Okay. So they're the three keys. They're the three solutions rolled into one. Okay. That is definitely going to help you out. If you can get on top of those three things, it will, it will massively help you. And I can see lots of uniques coming in there. Good stuff. Good stuff. Bonnie, I see you jumping in here. Sorry if I missed you earlier. Um, but good to see you in here as well. So let me know. Let me know if you've uh, if you liked this video, if you like this, this uh this series. Okay. So stick a like in there, smash that like button do a heart, whatever you want, whatever you want. Okay. But stick a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. And maybe you've noticed some of these, um, some of these things, especially these three keys, some of the check boxes, some of these things might be missing for you. And you think, okay, I need to need to check that one. I need to sort that one out. Okay. So definitely want, if you want to sort of get on top of your, of your belly fat, reduce that visceral fat and get your health back on track You know, make sure you start feeling better about yourself, more confident, and you know, one of the one of the things that I often hear, which pains me to hear this, is, is when women say to me that, you know, I look in the mirror and I don't recognize myself anymore. And that, that you know, that's it's really you know quite quite sad in a way. So I want to try and help you give you these freaky start checking these boxes and you'll start seeing that things do sort into place. Okay. Now, as I say, if you like this series, um, but perhaps need a bit more guidance, I've got a full plan that, that checks all these three boxes. So cortisol, inflammation, balancing those hormones. And so if you're interested in knowing what a full plan looks like, then hit that like button. Um, you can leave a comment down below as well if you want, if you're interested, just put um, help. All right, put help if you need some help. And then I can follow up with you. We can, uh, we can have a chat. I can find out what's going on. I can ask some questions about what's going on in your life, find out about your, your uniqueness, and, and give you my recommendations to see what might work for you. Okay. So do that now, like, and if you need help, just stick help down in the comments. I will be sure to jump on with you and see what we can do and to, to show you a full plan and see and see if it might be something that suits you. Otherwise, hope you've liked this free part series. I really do hope it's helped and um, look out for my, uh, my holiday gift guide as well. Some of you have already got it and that is uh, that's, that's getting, doing the rounds. Lots of people sharing that. So Check out that if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, any questions at all, do let me know, okay? Stick them in the comments. I'll hop on here. We can continue the conversation later on. I want to make sure that uh, that you leave here with a bit of clarity. You know what's going on. And you can start to reduce that belly fat, get rid of that visceral fat, start looking after yourself better and, and feeling good about yourself, okay? Right, so I'm going to leave it at that. Any questions, any comments, do let me know. Stick them in the comments. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will speak to you soon. Bye for now.